What is going on guys, Pat in the shop, and tonight we're talking about rod bolts. Very important fastener in the engine. Maybe you're doing this wrong, maybe you're doing it right. Let's take a look. The rod bolt, um, by far the most stressed fastener in an engine. Uh, these poor little guys are basically in control of the piston not shooting out the top of the engine when they fail or totally throwing the rod in every which direction when they let go. So these these little rod bolts, we, we ask a lot of them. Uh, and you'll notice, and I do get asked this quite a bit, why I always recommend ARP for every build, because I do get guys asking quite often, can I just run my stock uh, rod bolts? Do I have to get the rods resized? Um, and I always, always recommend ARP bolts just for that uh, particular reason is that they are the most stressed. ARP bolts are the top of the line. And, and I know they're a little bit on the expensive side, but really they're not um, in the grand scheme of things when you're building an engine and when you're thinking about the most stressed fastener in that engine is the rod bolts. So not really something you want to reuse unless you're using ARP bolts, which are, actually this isn't even an ARP bolt, this is an ARP bolt, but for example, and you can reuse ARP bolts because they're just that good. So the main um, focus on this video is not to sell you on ARP bolts, uh, but you really should go with them. They're great. They're a great fastener, uh, made in the U.S. They're just a, a quality product. Um, but more or less, this video is aimed towards if you do go with ARP bolts, what you need to do and what why you need to follow the instructions and why that's so important. And I'm going to point at this little packet right here because this little packet oftentimes just gets tossed aside. This comes with the ARP bolts if you're unfamiliar. This is their assembly lube. Um, oftentimes this gets thrown to the side. Guys are putting their rods together after they get them back from the machine shop um, and they never end up using this. They'll put a little lubricant of like a, a engine oil on the threads and call it a day. Uh, and, and that's okay if that's the way you want to do it but hopefully if you're doing it that way you're using a bolt stretch guide or gauge sorry and if you're not familiar with that let me show you what that's about so if you actually read the instructions here um they arp recommends using the stretch method uh when tightening bolts following the instructions for using a stretch gauge stretch bolts to five and a half to six thousandths of an inch so when you tighten a bolt and most of you guys probably already know this, but maybe you don't. When you tighten a bolt, the bolt actually stretches. The, your, your, the clamping force in between this, you're, you're clamping with that, uh, with the bolt on uh, your rod, but the bolt is actually getting stretched out. Uh, and that, if you've ever heard the term yield, when you torque a bolt to yield, that means you've torqued a bolt to the point uh, where it stretches, but any further it will not and will at yield it will not recover. So a bolt will stretch a little bit, but when you loosen it off, it'll almost like be like a, a spring and bounce back. But if you go to yield or pass yield, the, the bolt is stretched and will not come back fully to its original size. Um, so most torque specs are about 70% of yield to give a little bit of a buffer room. So you have another 30% more torque applied um, to that fastener before you're at that point. Uh, but that's just a rough idea for most, you know, fasteners. Uh, ARP, I think is a little higher, 80 to 90% depending. But what they recommend using is this tool right here, which is called a bolt stretch gauge. So, uh, this is a stock fastener, which doesn't have the little dimples, the ARP bolts. If you ever, if you ever look at them, You'll notice they have dimples on each end. That's actually for the stretch gauge to lock into, but we can get this bolt in here so you can guys kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. So we'll get it in there, you get it zeroed. So you'll, you'll typically zero um, the gauge onto the rod bolt in the rod, and as you're tightening it, you'll see the uh, well, you'll keep check, you'll tighten and you'll check it again. But what you'll see is the, the needle actually climbing up. And if you follow the proper torque spec, which on this, uh, in, on this particular, uh, ARP bolt is 45 foot pounds. Technically, if everything's perfect, when you torque it to 45, you should be up around the five, six thou of stretch mark because that's what they want. Um, but here is where, 
uh, the mistakes are made when guys are torquing their rod bolts, especially the ARPs. Here's how we're going to conduct our very non-scientific test on why I think you guys need to use your ARP fastener loop. First off, we're going to be we're going to be checking and zeroing the bolts off with the gauge at zero uh, each and every test in between to make sure there's no variations or stretch in the bolt. The first thing we're going to start off is with uh, no lubricant on the thread. So the threads are going to be dried off, uh, dried off and cleaned completely dry and we're going to try torquing them to the recommended 45 foot pounds using this snap on digital torque wrench. Uh, this torque wrench has been checked. Recently, within the last, probably the last six months, uh, I like to get my uh, wrenches checked on occasion, even my digital ones. So this wrench, uh, torque wrench is in good working condition and accurate. So we're gonna torque them to 45 foot pounds and one continuous motion as much as we can. I'll probably just snug it and then one continuous motion. So the first test, like I said, will be dry threads. Uh, second test will be uh, just engine oil. This is 10W40. Lucas hot rod engine oil. Uh, for fun, we're gonna try some blue Loctite. The next thing we'll try, this is actually not in the order we, try, we uh, tried them in, but I'm just showing you, and I'll show you the results in this order. Uh, Permatex Ultra Slick Engine Assembly Lube. We'll try that on the threads. We'll try the engine assembly grease driven. This is some nice stuff too. And then finally, we're gonna try the ARP um, fastener assembly lubricant. And we'll be able to see the results in between. I will be checking each one in between, torquing it to 45, seeing how much it's stretched on the stretch bolt gauge, and then double checking and zeroing the gauge in between. I'm gonna try this on uh, four, maybe six different bolts to make sure I'm getting somewhat the same results. Uh, and we'll see how much difference there are and how important this stuff really is. So let's check it out. So there's probably two things that you guys took out of our test we just did there. Number one is how important it is to use the ARP fastener lubricant. And it goes to show you that when you're torquing a bolt, how much um, torque to the actual uh, fastener is lost in uh, friction show you to the next thing that we learned uh, is how important a stretch gauge is, gauge is for rod bolts uh, especially when you're not using the recommended um, assembly lubricants if you don't have a, a good torque wrench maybe investing in a better torque wrench or even better a roll um, a rod bolt stretch gauge might be your best bet because uh, as you can see if you, <laughs> you have a few foot pounds off less you're and you're using um, say engine oil you're barely torquing that bolt and stretching it to where it should be so there you go guys let me know what you think of the rod bolt stretch with the ARP uh, I know some of you guys are gonna be commenting I've been torquing my rod bolts with 30 weight oil 
for 30 years and I've never had an issue and that might be the case and if it works for you that's awesome but I just thought I'd give you a little bit of information here on why I use ARP bolts and why I make sure I follow the instructions with the ARP fastener uh, uh, lubricant and the stretch bolt gauge because there are some inconsistencies and I just like to get the most out of the uh, out of that fastener. I've heard of rod bolts failing. I've heard of ARP rod bolts failing. Not too common and you have to wonder if that has a lot to do with how they were torqued and how they were put together. We always tend to blame the product when oftentimes the insulation is the issue. Uh, and you know just going about things the proper way will oftentimes take care of that. So let me know if you have an unopened pack of this stuff in your toolbox. If you decided not to use it, comment below. I, no one will make fun of you. Well, at least I won't make fun of you. Uh, and let me know uh, what you guys think. Thanks, guys.